Hi, everybody. Matt Schaefer, your Empowerment Connection and Relationship Coach. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're going to do a deep dive into three keys, three keys to attracting Mr. Right into your life with the one, the only Rockstar Relationship Coach, Jack Butler. What's up, my friend? How are you doing today? I'm really good, buddy. Great to be here with you. Excited to be live and uh, yeah, looking forward to diving in with you as always. I'm all about it, man. You're such a brilliant coach. You're someone I respect in this space as much or more than anybody else. And uh, I'm really excited for what you have to share here with my tribe and my audience. So ladies, we're going to be diving into this topic in just a second. But before we do, take a second, if you haven't already, for some crazy reason, hit that little subscribe button. I'm always uploading new content and having great collaborations with guys like Jack and Mark Rosenfeld and Elena Hart. And you know you want to get connected. So take a second, y'all comment, give us a one, let us know where you're watching from and be be sure to ask your questions because Jack and I want to address and help you work through whatever you think may be keeping you from Mr. Right. Okay. We are all here mm -hmm. to support you. Everybody join in live, uh, say hi, and let's, let's get this conversation going, Jack. So first off, you know, for a lot of ladies out there who maybe they haven't met him, right? Who yeah. is Mr. Right? What, what, what defines Mr. Right? I think that's a great place to start this, uh, this conversation. Yeah. So Mr. Right is someone that specifically with you wants to have a committed relationship. So mm. Mr. Right is someone that wants to show up for you consistently. Mr. Right is someone that is in a stage of his life where it makes sense for him to want to partner. And, in, and by the way, that's actually impersonally to you, right? That if, even if you weren't in the picture, he would be thinking, yeah, this is a stage of my life or my masculine development where I actually want to settle down and be in partnership with someone. Um, Mr. Right is that you'll know him by his presence, right? Mm, mm -hmm. You can ask a lot of questions about Mr. Right, but there's also this deep knowing that you can tap into that Mr. Right when he steps into your life that you might know it. And if that hasn't happened, then that hasn't happened yet. And you haven't yet, Mr. Right. So... That's, I love that, man. So it sounds like Mr. Right is a man who's really like, it's not so much about his physical traits or anything as it is, because those are all going to be very subjective, right? To, to the individual preferences of the person, but it's more the stage of life that he is in, that he is ready to be in connected relationship with you right? the same way that you are with him. So there's like an equivalency there. Yes. That's a good way of saying it. You definitely don't want to be in the game of trying to persuade someone that he's your Mr. Right. Mm. Mr. Right is actually what we call a self-selecting job, right? That he of mm. his own motivation, volition, and want, he wants the job. Of course, you get to say yes and no. You don't just have to say, oh, this guy wants it, so he gets it. But you don't want to be persuading him. You know, if I'm Google and you want to come be my senior engineer, I don't need to persuade you that that's like a good place to work. You, you kind of want to work. And you don't also get to say, oh, I'll show up on a Monday and then maybe I'll text you five days later, right? So again, it's kind of, you know, same simple analogies, but you'll know Mr. Right by the mm. continued presence that he wants to show up and bring to you. Absolutely, man. And that whole concept of continued presence and consistency, ladies, let me know, like how important is it a man that a man is consistent for you in relationship, right? Consistency is one of those, one of those key elements, right? I think of, uh, of being in a, being in a successful relationship. And so it sounds like the three keys that we're going to be talking about today are all ways that you can help attract that consistent committed man who's at that same level, uh, right. with you. Am I right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah. So awesome, man. Well, let's, let's, let's dive into that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, Michelle says here that consistency is very important. It yeah. absolutely is, right? Because so many men out there are simply just not, right? They're not consistent. They're not showing up the way that we want them to. Uh, truly, when people show you who they are, believe them, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, and so we're going to, we're going to be diving, we're diving into this. Let's go ahead. And if you want to like share, what do you think that first, what's the first point? What do you think the first thing is that, uh, is the first key that we're going to be talking about? Yeah. The first key to attracting Mr. Right is to be your real self. Mm. What I mean by that is that if the right guy is going to be attracted to you, let's make sure that you are at the heart of the equation, Right. Not a projection mm. of you, not a persona of you, not a performance, not a mask. Of course, at yeah. times in life, we have those things. But this is about you actually showing who you really are so the right guy can mm. be attracted in. You know, my belief is that you have a precious and unique essence that's unique in all time, geography, and history. 
And that is the mm -hmm. thing that's going to be most enticing to Mr. Right. Right? A lot of the mm. other things that are superficial can be replicated, but the, the, the precious essence of you is actually something that you don't need to create and figure out because it's kind of already there. For most of us, it's a game of relaxing some of the strategies that we've deployed that get in the way of us actually believing that our real self is worthy, um, mm. is available, and that someone else is going to fall in love with it. Right. So this I love is that, like man. a sophisticated honeypot strategy in a way, right? It's saying that you mm. emanating your vibration, your color, your fragrance, your essence, your signature mm, suchness is enough. Mm. And you don't need to start doing other things. It's actually, that's why I talk to people about effortless dating. It's like you can actually mm. put less effort in and get more results because what's actually here is kind of purer and truer to who you really are. I, I love that, man. And ladies, doesn't that take a lot of the pressure off? Doesn't it take a lot of the stress off to know that you don't have to be anybody else in order to attract a great guy into your space? And because we're not just talking about any great guy, we're talking about Mr. Right for you, yes. right? So Mr. Right is all about you being your authentic self. You don't have to be anybody different in order to attract the right man into your life. And, and Jack, I know what you want to share. So one of the things you want to share with my community today is this amazing masterclass that yes. you're offering, which ladies, be sure to sign up for this. Here's, a, I'm going to put a link up to it now. Jack's free masterclass uh, that he's, he's conducting. I, I don't think you've done this in a while, Jack. Tell us a little bit about what it is that you're offering. Yeah, so this is called the Say Hello to Mr. Right Masterclass. So it's exactly in this mm -hmm. territory. And it's really my system for effortless dating, for avoiding the frustrations and highs of lows of dating, so that you get to sit back, trust, and be more patient, that when Mr. Right comes along, you'll notice it, and that it's actually worth waiting for, right? That you don't mm. need to prematurely step into a relationship with a guy that's not going to show up for you, that you don't need to keep repeating patterns of frustration. So it's actually about doing some mm. of the deeper inner work that lets you be free and authentic in the dating process. Like, wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't it be cool if you didn't have to worry about whether he wanted another date with you? Wouldn't it be cool if you found yourself being authentically shy in a date and not having a story that you need to be any different? So this is about taking that pressure off exactly the way that you talk about and, um, you know, my kind of three-point system in, in the webinar for how you do that. So. I love it, man, because you're unequiv you're unequivocally one of the most authentic human beings I've ever met and truly Thank like... I mean, uh, there's nothing more attractive to me, both in partnership that I'm looking for with women and in people that I'm collaborating with than a person who is authentic and aligned and congruent within themselves. So uh, yeah. I'm really looking My forward best. to every, so everybody take a second, uh, sign up at the banner. Uh, you'll see that link in the banner also down in the caption or the description of this video, there'll be a place to sign up. So take a second ladies at the end of this video and be sure to uh, take advantage of that. I don't think Jack, you've done this in like three years, right? It's been That's a while right. since you've done oh, anything yeah. like this. was the last time I did a solo webinar. And it, it was no, anywhere near as good as this. I'll tell you that. So yeah, <laughs> three years of experience, right? Like you've worked with thousands oh, yeah. of women. So yeah. I'm excited. Man. I'm excited for you. I'm excited to hear my audience's, you know, response and totally. how much they grow from that whole thing. And uh, so, so let's dive in. So, so what do you think, Jack, the, the, the so be your, be your true self, be your real self. That's the yes. first important key. And I couldn't yes. agree with you more. Yes. And then yes. what, what do you think the second key would be in order to really attract Mr. Right? into your life yeah so the second key is actually about letting go of what isn't mr right so letting go of mr wrong right mm. and in this <laughs> instance you know just to make it really clear mr wrong is anyone that isn't mr right right so this is mm. the guy you've kind of had a crush on but never have explored with this is the ex that keeps coming back only when he misses you or is horny um, this is drop off guy. This is Mr. Hot and cold. You know, there's all sorts of kind of names that we can give. You know, you might've had that trajectory where the relationship was going like this. And then at some point and you're like, oh, maybe he's just taking space. Maybe he's just busy at work. You know, with Mr. Right, Mr. Right won't be perfect, right? Let's, let's get this out of the way. Mr. Right is still going to mm -hmm. trigger you. Mr. Right, you're still going to have some of your wounds come up. That's all the good richness of an authentic relationship. But Mr. Mm -hmm. Right isn't someone that you can push away by saying one wrong thing. Right. Mr. Right isn't that you, you know, you broach the conversation too early. And now, oh, Mr. Right's decided that he's actually Mr. Wrong because you said something in the wrong order, right? Mr. Right has got yeah. this sort of consistent underpinning to his desire to want to connect and relate to you. And if you can clear your field of the people that are not that, 
you've got the maximum amount of space for Mr. Right to step into and the minimum amount of confusion in your own system. Like it's almost like getting up to bat. A lot of people aren't up to bat because they're still a bit stuck in the past, kind of hung up on someone that actually is never going to be Mr. Right. So you sometimes have to do the difficult work to grieve these Mr. Wrongs, to let them go, to drop mm. the attachment so that you can face forward in your life. Right. Otherwise, you've always got one foot in the past. And you and I know that, you know, part of being present is that we're not living in the past. And mm -mm. otherwise, they should just be consigned to your past, even if it was terribly painful, that you can bless that, thank them for their presence in your life, that they showed you something, they showed you inconsistency and in what that's like, for example. And then yeah. now you've, got to, you've got to step into what, what's available for a better future, which is the guy that actually wants to be with you, wants the job and wants to show up. I love that, man. I, I love what you said there about, you know, when we have a foot in the past, like it's almost like we're doomed to repeat it, right? When we have right. a foot in the past, we're not fully present. We're not fully connected. We're not fully, you know, dialed in. So yeah. like we, we, that's what, that's what have, keeps our patterns perpetuating themselves is when we keep looking to and clinging to the past. And I mean, I talk a lot with my yeah. friends around the concept of bandwidth right? That we have a finite bandwidth as individuals, but yes. for, for attention and focus to other people. And, and so when we're spending any amount of our time and bandwidth settling on something less than what we actually want, that is occupying space mm -hmm. that could be better spent focusing on ourselves, right? Yeah. Or focusing on calling in a, uh, a worthy partner. So yes. there is such I like freedom. That in that yeah, you know totally it's a bit like i don't know you probably remember this like the early days of the internet right where we'd all dial in and then they, we have contention rate so if too many of us are dialing in at the same time we actually can't get online and it's almost like if there's mm. too much energy in your space which is casual uncommitted friends with benefits x that still comes around good friend that if he said he wanted to sleep with me i probably would sleep with him all of that it's distortion and contention rate that isn't going mm -hmm. to the real deal which is a clear signal, which is a clear connection with a guy that wants to do something. You know, so you you might say, well, if I didn't do that, I'd be lonely. But you've got to realize there's an opportunity cost to filling your life with the things you don't actually want, right? Like it's mm -hmm. like in life, it's much better to have one possession you really love than 10 possessions that you're mediocre about. Same thing in relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So are you into quality or quantity, right? Yeah. Are you are you thinking are you are you taking the devil you know over the angel you don't? Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way of saying it. And sometimes that devil you know has a lot more to do with the familiarity of, of repeating patterns. Um, and the other mm -hmm. thing is about Mr. Right, you know, when you're letting go of these Mr. Wrongs, sometimes Mr. Wrongs create a lot of spark. Right? There's a lot of intensity mm. perhaps on the front end or you get prematurely into a relationship with them and you might have to recalibrate what Mr. Right is going to feel like. You might not have actually had that experience before. Right? It may be a little mm. bit less of that roller coaster right? of the, you know, the anxious avoidant dance that you talk about a lot you know, or kind of getting yeah. on someone's chain and you're suddenly you're co totally in intoxicated, but it's not yeah. actually going to stabilize out as a real committed relationship. And so you sometimes hey. have to stop being drunk. Right? You don't need to go to yeah. Vegas all the time. You actually just want yeah. committed availability, which sometimes might look a bit boring if you've been used to this, like, oh, relationship is all this intoxicating roller coaster. It's like, no, it doesn't actually have to be that way. Exactly. And that's, such, that's so beautifully put, Jack, and it plays perfectly into what the soul surrendered commented. Can we talk about attachment styles? Yes, we most definitely can, my dear, because <laughs> as Jack was referring to, I mean, I talk a lot about, you know, yeah. Mr. Wrong and Mr. Right around attachment style. And yeah. a lot of times, let, let us know, ladies, let us know in the comments. Sometimes Mr. Wrong feels like Mr. Right, because who Mr. Right is to us has gotten a little wonky. Right, because we've started to confuse triggering and, and stimulation of our attachment style with passion and chemistry and love, and that's mm -hmm. the anxious avoidant trap. If you're an if you're an anxious partner, if you're an anxious partner, you're going to have a tendency to be drawn to an avoidant attachment style partner who is someone who you know, and you're in this back and forth dance where you really yep. want to be with him, and he keeps you at arm's length, and then it really triggers you and it stimulates you, so you think that you're having like passion and chemistry and love you're in this emotional roller coaster yep. but in reality you're just getting triggered you're just getting triggered and now you've got that wire crossed right and so you get addicted to that roller coaster totally to going to vegas yeah. <laughs> yeah intermittent behavior can be totally addictive you know sometimes you can also put this into the language of a uh, food right you know that you that sugar rush that you get from the donut isn't really good for you yeah right 
So yeah. very, very occasionally it can be fun to do it, but you actually want a healthy, nutritious food. That needs to be the backbone of your diet. Same thing, the backbone of a real relationship is actually availability, right? Is actually commitment and consistency. You know, availability is the new sexy. <laughs> like unavailable yeah. guy may have you feeling like donuts, but you know, that's not gonna be long-term health, right? So sometimes you have exactly. to learn how to like quinoa. Mm -hmm. No, it's not as sexy as donuts, but it, it's sexy over the long term because you, you get the results in your body. And it's the same thing with relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, and what we're talking about here, ladies, exactly, Jack, is to is to give secure partnership, right? Give Mr. Right a chance, right? Let go of Mr. Wrong and let Mr. Right, you know, give you a chance, even though he might be a little boring to you at first, that you're just not feeling it with him the same way. That's okay. It's okay that he's not, you know, giving you that same sort of high that Mr. Wrong did because we're conditioned to be drawn to Mr. Wrong when we're living from our ego and we're living for our wounds when we're living from our trauma, yeah. you know? So well have the courage to release that and, and get used to eating your greens. You know what I'm saying? They're not gonna yeah. taste good at first, are they? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's almost like a recalibration and and most of that recalibration takes a little bit of sobering up, slowing down. You know, the relationship isn't proven in week one, right? Or week two. You know, it's 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 not a sprint. It's much more of a marathon. So I don't mm -hmm. care if you're really fast over 100 meters. If you're if you're conged out after 200 meters, I'm going to win in the marathon, right? And I'm not just saying relationships winning or losing. It's just that that's it's taking a longer term view. And sometimes people are like, oh, well, I've got, you know, I've got, I'm, I'm old, you know, I've been divorced twice. I've got, I, you know, I've got to go fast. It's like, no, slow it down. Slow is the way to fast. Less haste, more speed, more clear sight, more knowingness, more discernment, more trust. This is high level development, right? It's, it's got a different set of vocabulary and it's also got a different set of possibilities. Exactly, my friend. I love that, man. So, so yeah, so this is all stuff that I'm sure you're going to be, you know, digging into in, in one way or another, right? In your masterclass coming up. So, totally. so yeah, right. Like this sort of like uh, releasing the people that aren't serving you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. In my speak, I call it clear your field. And uh, it's, it's a powerful process. And it's actually a process that I invite people into to take on as a real mm. commitment. You know, whether you do more with me or not from the masterclass, that is something that you can take away and actualize in your life. And it's super powerful. I know that even from my own experience, right, where I used to keep a lot of casual in my field. And one summer I decided to fully clear that up and boom, manifested my lady, right? It's, it's real stuff. This actually works. So exactly. I, I love it, man. And clear, clearing your field, man, clear your field, clear your bandwidth and allow yourself to have the space to be yes. with yourself. Yes, Matt. Yes. And from that grounded space, yes. like you don't want to replace Mr. Wrong immediately with Mr. Right. Allow there to be some space there. Right. Yeah. And and sit, sit in that space and then call in Mr. Right from a grounded place of completion. I love that. Yeah. How wholesome. What it, mm. what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> what it's like, about, granola. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Right Granola. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 what would be the third key, man? What do you yeah. think the third key is? So I think it's a good time to talk about this because you you just painted this vision of clearing the field, coming back to yourself, knowing yourself, feeling whole and complete, doing that work. And so, the key number three is actually about trusting yourself. The key number three mm. is trust yourself, which is that you actually have the capacity to know when Mr. Right is, is stepping into your life. And it doesn't mean that you need to know it in the moment, right? Some people have that, boom, I just knew that person. For most of us, it's a period of discernment. It's a period of getting to know someone. It's a period of noticing over a period of time, is this person a zero or are they actually a one? Right? Are they actually someone that's going to keep showing up? Because you know, once we mm -hmm. get through the three, six, nine, 12 months, a lot of guys have proven that to you, at least, they're drop-off guy, right? Or to you, they're mm -hmm. whole guy. We're talking about something that's got a lot more staying power, equanimity, and consistency. And you get to that by trusting yourself. Right? Most of you have had the experience where you've ignored red flags or where you're so busy in your mental activity and doubt that you're kind of confused about what your own guidance to yourself is. The cool thing about learning mm. to trust yourself more deeply is whether Mr. Right comes into your life in the next season or not, this is really freaking cool because you get to trust yourself. You get to trust your decisions. You get to have less fear, less doubt, less avoidance. 
it's kind of like fully growing up and, and tuning in your own guidance system. I know you and I, in a previous call, we're talking about the old style radios, right? You have to, and then you tune it in, you get yeah. the right frequency. That's what you can learn how to do with yourself. Because most of us, our voice of guidance is kind of a little bit slower and calmer and softer. So we have to mm. grow down the arrested nervous system in order to have a high quality conversation with myself. And if he's the right guy, there's normally not that much noise and static. It's kind of like there's an isness, there's a realness, there's a, hmm, yeah, him. It's not like I have to justify. It's not. It's not because. It's not because he's so hot or because my friends like him. It's kind of like, yeah, I don't even have to justify, rationalize. I can't even maybe even give you a reason. I just kind of get a knowing that this is the person I want to do it with. That's cool. And 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 that's an that's such a powerful point, man. The two things I want to touch on with what you just shared is like really. It sounds a lot like trusting yourself is coming back to your your intuition. Yes, well, and so. honoring honoring your own discernment. Yeah, as a as, as a being. Beautiful, you know. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah, if you found and yourself being able to quiet that voice, being able to quiet, quiet say. that yes. voice, quiet that egoic sense of self, and yes. really like trust and allow your higher self to speak through you. Yes, totally. I will put it into a different realm just because it might make it a little um, easier to approach. Sometimes I, you know, I've been working for myself all my life, and sometimes I've gone high on my own business ideas. Oh my gosh, that's going to be amazing. Here's the brainstorm. I'm sending it to everyone. It's going to change the world. And it materializes zero because it's all like just a big rush of fantasy, right? Versus the thing that you're actually meant to be doing. Sometimes it has a little bit of a quieter. People keep knocking on the door and asking you to do it, or people invite you to help them in that particular way. There's a little bit more of a grounded, knowing, life-aligned quality to it rather than a big fantasy. Anytime you're in the big fantasy mm -hmm. about the guy, what we can expect is there's going to be a big fall, right? You know, Lewis Capaldi, then the rug got pulled. That's the thing. If you've got yeah. a fantasy that's not built on some foundation, at some point your fantasy becomes your disappointment, right? So you're on the big expectation, big disappointment. Now, if you like that roller coaster, fine. But for most people, that's actually not fun after a while, right? Much better than false hope is real hope. Mm -hmm. Real hope is built upon a grounded, present, trusting awareness. That's what's cool rather than I have to imagine it's going to be better. If you, anytime you have to imagine a guy is going to be better, you're, you're dating the future. You're not dating the present. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so that, that brings up another huge point. And the other thing I wanted to address with this is like, so A, learning to trust yourself, quiet yourself, and, and tap, tap, tap into your discernment, right? And yes. honor that part and then the second part is be wary of falling in love with a fantasy and yeah. having to talk and, and to someone who doesn't exist and then have to talk yourself into it ladies can you do you ever feel like you have to talk yourself into being with your partner negotiate yourself in, mm. into being in relationship because you know what you're doing right in that situation it's mm -hmm. your ego <laughs> trying to talk the rest of you into coming along a lot of times on a wild goose chase <laughs> with somebody who maybe isn't the, the right the kind of guy for you. So, yeah. Yeah. How, how much are you negotiating with yourself to try to like talk yourself into a relationship that at the end of the day, like isn't healthy for right. you? Right. That's a that's a powerful question to uh to ask yourself because the right relationship and not just talk yourself into it, but talk the people around you. Totally. Talk your friends and family. Like, are you trying are you like a lawyer litigating <laughs> for your relationship to be the people around you and having to like that's, talk everybody else into yeah, it? That's <laughs> common. Yeah. Anytime you have to find yourself making too many excuses for your guy, he's probably not your guy. Right. The right guy doesn't necessarily have to be amazing all the time. But it's like he's showing up. He kind of speaks for himself, right? His actions are there for you and other people to engage with. It doesn't, it's again, there's not much um, mental conceptual analysis needed. It's a little bit more, it just is. It just is. It, it, just, it just is. It just feels right, right? Mm -hmm. So, so ladies, tap into your feelings and check in with yourself and learn to trust your emotional guidance system in this, in this, in this situation, in this experience. You know, I know so many ladies will say, you know, they say hindsight's 2020, 20, right? But they'll look back at their relationship and be like, oh man, I felt early on something wasn't right, right, <laughs> right. about this person. And then I, what? I ignored it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, totally. what, that's what so many women do. So you yeah, do. we don't that's get to talk. <laughs> we yeah. don't get to do that anymore. So, so ladies, be sure to ask your questions. We'd love to answer a couple questions here as we start to start to wrap up. Uh, Audrey, Audrey has had a great share. Being single has been really beneficial for mm. her. So spending some time 
on her own. It changed her priorities and criteria around yeah. what she speaks yeah. in a man. Yeah. I would even go yeah. so far um, to say if you've never not been in relationship, that this would be something really worthy of practicing. But there's almost like a, a the full authentic development of you sometimes needs time alone in order to make that happen. And I would say personally, some mm. of the richest times in my past were times of being really alone and really having to learn how to be with myself and not just keep popping up into distractions or into connections or, oh, I'm feeling a little bored. Let me hit that woman up. It's like, why am I actually doing that? And I'm not, I don't make any intentions that I want to date her, really. I'm just, I'm just needing a connection hit, right? So you start to get a little clearer and more sober about why you're doing what you're actually doing. Exactly. I love that, man. And sobriety is really what it comes down to. It's getting all the intoxicating, distracting, you know, mm-hmm. things that are pulling mm-hmm. us in 10 different directions out of our consciousness so that we can truly ask ourselves, is this person in front of me in alignment with who I know myself to be and right. what I know and recognize myself to be worthy of? Mm-hmm. Point blank, right? I mean, that's that's it. And it all comes with self-awareness. You know, and, and so, and as we, as we circle around and as we wrap up, you know, like how does this tie into sort of the masterclass and what you're going to be sharing with everybody who decides to, to, to join you in that, in that program? Yeah. So the, the strap line of the masterclass is, you know, is, is how to date without the frustrations and highs and lows. So I'm really teaching my philosophy of dating, which is that it doesn't have to be so effortful. You can actually have him do more of the lifting that your question really is, do I want to go on the next date? And you can start to detach from the outcome, right? So it's much more of a process-oriented dating than, oh, I'm having to date because I need to get the relationship. What you'll find in life is the more you grasp, the less you have, right? The more you're attached, the more hurt you get. So dating can actually be some of the most rich inner work and spiritual practice if you let it be that way, right? You let it work on you. You don't have to be perfect. Permission to learn, permission to fail. So what people get from coming on the masterclass is kind of like a rewiring of how they've been approaching dating. If your dating has been frustrating to you or if it's had a lot of expectations, false hopes, and disappointments, I kind of want to teach you how to be much more sober, discerning, and trusting in the process. I love it, man. I love it. And I think that's so powerful. So ladies, check it out. Sign up for Jack's masterclass. I know he's got spots open coming up here over the rest of the week. So be sure to, to check that out, man. And, and and Jack, thank you so much for stopping by and awesome. dropping some knowledge with love my, uh, with my with community you. here. It's, yeah. It's been, it's been so much fun. Awesome. I've loved it. Thanks everyone for being here with us. Thanks for your questions and your comments. And I look forward to seeing some of you soon if you come and join us on the masterclass. Yeah. Appreciate you. And thanks. Thanks everybody for joining us. This has been so much fun and we'll see you soon on my channel. Talk All right. to you later, y'all. And if you haven't hit subscribe yet, take a second, hit that little subscribe button. Oh. Join the party. We do this every week. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Yeah, thanks, Talk to you later. Bye-bye.